locating Solomon's Temple has a lot to do with the water. The water available to cleanse the uh, temple court. So how did the water get to the temple? Uh, the Talmud says an aqueduct ran from Edom Springs to the temple. Uh, here's a diagram of the springs up near Bethlehem. Uh, Solomon's pools are here. And here, this little red dot, is Edom Springs. Now, the aqueduct flowed down to the Temple Mount. It entered Wilson's Arch uh, into the Mount, and it was laid towards the south. Now, if the Temple had been at the Dome of the Rock, then they would have brought the aqueduct to the north. The Muslim fountain here uh, was built after 600 A.D. sometime, and water channels here were blocked off at that time. But as we can see, this huge water system here with these channels, and this one goes all the way out to a pool out here. Now, it's about 40 feet below the surface. As you can see, some of these just seem to end uh, in nothing, nowhere. Uh, some of them, this one here, goes directly to the Great Sea. This one here would have filled the Well of the Leaf, and from there it would have filled this huge cistern, and would have continued down to fill the uh, many baths, uh, the mikvahs down in the south, southern area, and also supplied the water for uh, Solomon's palace, which was south of the temple. This is a diagram of all of the work that I've been doing, the sources, the maps, the ruins on the ground, and uh, it shows in green here, would have been the size of Solomon's temple area, the blue, the extended uh, temple compound by Herod's. Uh, this would have been 600 by 600 feet, or a furlong by a furlong. Uh, right here is the wailing wall, so that you can get your directions. Now when I place that diagram, over the water map and we can see that this one line here with the pool at the end uh, is right next to the temple right where it should be because uh, the Mishnah tells us that uh, the high priest in the uh, first century built new machinery for lowering the brazen labor down to a specially made pool uh, through a cut in the temple court and he would submerge the uh, labor down there and in the morning hoist it up. This line here comes down and empties out onto the priest court right next to the tables there. Um, another small conduit most likely came over to the altar uh, which had holes around the base of it where the water would have bubbled up like a spring. Uh, they merely would have uh, sealed up this area. There was a uh, one and a half foot wall blocking this area off here. Uh, and then they would flood the court until it became as clean as milk and uh, it would go down a drain that was down in this area. This uh, other line going here uh, goes to the building that would have been here, which was Chamber of the Hearth, and it had a uh, huge mikvah below it uh, for the high priest. And so we would expect to see a mikvah here under the uh, mosque, the Muslim mosque. 
And this is a photograph that has surfaced recently, done by Robert Hamilton, taken in 1927. There was a large earthquake that did a lot of damage uh, to the mosque, and so he was brought in as an outside engineer to help. And he was allowed to photograph and make records of everything, but anything that pointed to a Jewish temple ever being below the mosque uh, he was not allowed to um, release that. So it's been all these years, and finally these pictures were released. So this is uh, probably the, the high priest's mikvah that was under the chamber of the hearth. As I said before, the temple itself was 600 by 600 feet approximately. Uh, and uh, Josephus says that Fort Antonia and the temple together measured six furlong round, 600 feet by 1,200 feet, meaning that Fort Antonia itself was also approximately 600 by 600 feet, um, which took up only a, a small portion of the Temple Mount today, not the whole Temple Mount. So this is uh, my rendition of what the temple would have looked like in 70 A.D. And we have Fort Antonia back here. And this was the Dome of the Rock area. The moat behind that and the deep ravine alongside it. And this would be Herod's temple with um, Herod's stoa here. And... This would have been the south wall, or is the south wall, that we see today. It would have been an inner wall of the temple, and uh, the inner wall of the sacred area here. And on this corner right here uh, would have been uh, the place of the trumpeting. Josephus tells us that uh, a priest stood at this point and uh, blew the shofa every Sabbath to begin and when to end it for celebrations, ceremonies. And uh, so this is Robinson's Arch here, and this is that southwest corner. And the archaeologist uh, dug out this area here, which was the first century street, and on that street they found the trumpeting stone. This says to the trumpeting place, and it fit right in here, and this is the southwest corner, and here's the nook where uh, the priest stood. Now this fell during 70 AD, the destruction uh, when those walls were knocked down and this laid where it fell and broke the slabs of the street when it fell. So we know this is the original location. Now this and the, the water system being found there tells us exactly where the threshing floor was where Solomon built the temple. Uh, it wasn't down in uh, the city of David, or that trumpeting stone would have been down there. So if you will visit my webpage to read about all the other facts identifying this same location at templemountlocation.com.